Tarzan of the Apes, a character of Edgar Rice Burroughs' famous book, in reality is the son of a titled English couple, Lord and Lady Greystoke, who were put ashore by a mutinous crew in the jungles of West Africa. The maroon couple were left with tools and firearms, and Tarzan's mother and father built the little hut in which Tarzan is born a year afterward. It's the night of their little son's first birthday. Lord and Lady Greystoke are sitting in their rude but strongly built home. Around them lies the jungle, dark, mysterious, teeming with great sinister shapes, mocking with dreadful quiet through the night. The roar of a lion tells that the mighty monarch of the forest has made his kill. And from farther away can be heard the hideous laughing cry of the hyenas, echoing the lion's ponderous roar. The wind rustles the leaves of the trees outside. Both are startled. What's that, John? Yes. Yes. I heard it, too. Oh, Oh, it's only the wind in the trees, dear. It it gave me rather a start. It did me, too, for a moment. Silly as both of us. Nothing short of a herd of elephants could force its way in here. I confess a bit of pride. This place is built like a vault. Oh, John, I know we're safe enough, but sometimes I don't think I can stand it a moment longer. It's, it's the night. They're dreadful. There. There, that's what I mean. All night long, the jungle seems to threaten us. And those hyenas, oh, that hideous cry of theirs. It's like the laugh of a maniac. They seem to be jeering at us. You know, someday, someday... Now, they... Alice, get hold of yourself. You can't let go this way. You'll go mad. You have to hold tight, dear, for him. For him. Oh, he's a year old today, John. Yes, a year old and a sound as a nut. Sleeps through gunshots and everything. He's a darling, isn't he, John? And the picture of you. Nothing of the sort. He looks exactly like you. Oh, oh yes, he does, dear. Why, he has your eyes and that sweet little smile of his. Oh. Why, that's exactly <laughs> like you, dear. <laughs> oh! John, he'll burst the door down. I know he will. Look at the bar. Uh, turn down that lamp so if I can get a bead on the beggar through here. All right. There. Don't get your face too close to the, to the lattice. He may strike through. There. There. See through here. Uh, he's a big brute. I don't want to look. Shoot him, John. Shoot him. There, dear. Hold steady. And we'll have a lion skin to wrap the baby in. Hurry, John. Hurry. Every time he closes the door, it gives terribly. Lord, he must be hungry to come up this way. Oh, he dies. It's terrible. Oh, those horrible teeth. Oh. Stand away from my arm. Oh. Put that one right down his throat. Another one will settle him. There, that finishes the liar. It's all over, dear. Why, he's as dead as a dawn now. Don't be frightened. Oh, John. I'm sorry to go to pieces this way. Really, I am, but you know, the last few days. I've had a terrible premonition that something would happen. It's all silly, I know, but, oh, I can't escape this dreadful feeling. You're just nervous, that's all. Why, any day now we'll wake up and find a boat in the bay, and you and I and the little chap there will go sailing back to England. Oh, it's been two years now, and there's been no boat. Two terrible years, John. Why, Alice, I... I can't understand this in you at all. Oh, buck up, my girl. Don't let it get you this way. Oh, I'm sorry, John. It's like a terrible threat hanging over. Listen to the jungle now. Why, there isn't a sound. No. That shock 
quieted them for a little while. But the silences are the worst of all. The silence means that something awful and dreadful is passing through the jungle. Yeah. <laughs> silence is broken for you. A panther. Oh, John. I hate to show the white feather like this. And I shan't do it again. Now, there, that's a promise. White feather? Oh, why, <laughs> rot. You've been marvelous, Alice. This infernal jungle is bound to get you once in a while. Come on, kiss me and forget it. <laughs> Gladly, sir. John. Which one of our neighbors is that? A bull. It's the apes I hate worst of all. They're so human and yet so far from human. Those long, powerful arms, their awkward gait and the terrific speed in which they swing and leap from branch to branch. They are nasty beggars. That one you shot yesterday. Oh, those nasty, close-set eyes and yellow fangs. Come on now. Oh, <laughs> forget it. Again, the cry of a huge bull ape. A brutish creature of terrible strength and awful temper. The ape has suddenly gone mad, raging, foaming mad, with that peculiar madness which suddenly seizes bull apes and quickly passes. He's running rampant among his people. The younger and lighter wretch are scampering to the highest branches. Kayla, a young female, comes into the clearing. Her baby is clinging to her neck. She doesn't know. She doesn't know that Bull Lap has gone into one of his terrible rages. So at sight her. The others yell hoarse cries of warning. He's bearing down on her. She leaps from branch to branch. She has her by the ankle. She breaks loose. Up the tree she goes. Bull Lap behind her. She makes a horrific leap to another tree. She, she makes it. The jaw tears her baby's grip loose from its mother's neck. It falls. Falls to the ground with a thud. All that roaring goes fainter, fainter, as he hurls his powerful body through the trees. That bull ape is certainly doing a lot of boasting tonight. He, he sounds very close, John. Oh, he's miles away. Those bull apes have tremendous lung power. Beastly sound. Yes. John, it's getting a little cold. I think perhaps we'd better build a small fire. Baby sneezed this morning. All right. I want to go out and drag that lion into the shed anyway before the hyenas get up the skin. John, have you noticed how deathly still the jungle has suddenly become? Mm, just a lull. Well, where's the axe? Over there in the corner. Just a few sticks will do, John. Just enough to keep the chill off. Right, oh. Be back in a second. Aren't you going to take your rifle? Oh, I hardly need it. Just going out to the shed. I'll leave the door open. The light will keep any animals away. All right. You know, every time I open the latch on this door, I'm impressed with myself. <laughs> well, it's quite an invention, Alice. <laughs> yes, dear. Uh, I have admired it before. Oh, no. Now run along and get the wood. Yes, all right, dear. <laughs> The sound of Greystoke's axe echoes through the strangely silent jungle. Greystoke doesn't notice the fearful tenseness of the silence. The jungle is cringing, cringing away from a monstrous shadow which moves ominously through the hushed and fearful night. A huge ape comes to the clearing. It is Olat, the crazed derelict of the jungle. He halts. His insane, bloodshot eyes catch sight of the unsuspecting Greystoke. They gleam hatred from beneath his shaggy brows. He pairs his fangs as though in a horrid snarl, but no sound comes from his great throat. Slowly, noiselessly, the 350 pounds of stifled rage moves across the clearing. Bolt upright, his mighty arms dangling loose at his side. A shadow falls across the log which Greystoke is chopping. He looks up into the beastly, snarling face of the brute. Oh! 
The ape makes a lunge at Grace Oak. Out! Just close the door! Grace Oak raises his axe, brings it down with terrific force. The ape catches the axe in his terrible hands and flings it from him. With bared fangs, he leaps at Grace Oak. 